Hey folks, welcome to another cool painting table tutorial. Today we're looking at Yannis Drake from Blackstone Fortress. Alright, so just a first uh, shout out to Mass Collectibles. The reason I got these tutorials out uh, at all is because he gave me an advanced copy of this, so we will get some paint on these a little bit before the box is out, so you'll see these coming out um, over the next week or and a half. So we're starting off here um, just uh, base coating, leaving the black uh, primer showing uh, with some Vallejo Model Air Intermediate Blue mainly looking at the cloak here. With the intermediate blue on, um, we're going to add in a, a little bit of Vallejo Game Color Dead White to that, uh, that I just mixed up with some Windex to make sure it's nice and thin, because uh, I was adding my airbrush white, uh, and we're just going to start highlighting up this cloak with one little step uh, in between this and the final highlight. Alright, and then for a final highlight of the cloak, we're just going to go to pure dead white. There is a, a couple swirly patterns around the corners of the front of the jacket that you can kind of see me splotching on paint. Um, it's more just to hit the swirls themselves rather than highlight the cloak, uh, because we can go back and black line the swirls to add some depth that'll help it pop. The next part of them that we're going to tackle is the pants, uh, and we're going to use Adriatic Blue for this. Okay, uh, we're going to highlight the pants now uh, using a mix of Adriatic Blue and uh, white here, the same white that we were using before. Alright, we're just going to shade it with Drakenhoff Nightshade by Games Workshop, making sure that we clean up any spots on the front of the pants that we don't want it uh, to settle on. And then we're going to hit the cloak with non-oil. I can't remember if I used a non-oil gloss or uh, the normal pot here. Um, either one can work. The gloss is in. It tends to flow a little bit nicer um, and it's easier to move around. pants done, it's time to base the head with scale 75 pink flesh, as well as the hands, and anywhere else we have exposed skin. Alright, and then we're going to go uh, start highlighting everything with uh, scale 75's golden skin, and this is the reason that um, we didn't do the rest of the clothing, is because we might get a little bit of overspray here with uh, highlighting the head. Um, Paces are generally a really good focal point, so I like to take my time, make sure the blends are really nice on them, so that's why we're doing it in this order. Alright, now that the basic skin is on, we're going to go into a all-over shade here of Reichland Flesh Shade. Um, I'm going to do two coats of this, two coats, um, uh, make sure we get a nice good variation of the skin tone. Right on, and now that the flesh shade is all dry, we're going to go in um, more specifically, not all over, but into the deepest parts of, parts of his face and his hands with Drew Kai Violet just to deepen those shadows. Okay, so here I went and just blacked out um, the different details in his face that wasn't skin at this point. Um, and we're going to go in and start highlighting his hair um, with uh, a mix of white and black, um, just making a mid-tone gray. And what I'm doing is slowly, as you can see, the gray is going to get progressively lighter and lighter, so I'm drawing small um, lines across his hair, and I guess his mustache as well, um, just creating highlights where, skin uh, where hair strands would be. Um, because I figure he's been a pirate for a while, he'd be having gray hair. Um, he's also a hipster, so silver hair is a thing. Alright, 
the face is done, we're gonna go from skill 75, attribute shadow, and then start painting the pelt thing that he has on his back. Okay, the next color we're going to go in with is uh, Dubai Brown. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be a dry brush, it's definitely an older brush, it's quite wet. Um, and we're going to be just starting to layer it out along the edges of that pelt. Um, I can't represent this clip for the next one, but you'll see me go back in with a little bit of African Shadow, kind of blending right, right here, uh, the color back and forth to make sure we're going to get the transition between the two. Okay, and now we're going to do the exact same thing again, um, but with Gobi Brown instead. Um, just hitting the edges, and then if we need to, we'll bring it back in with uh, some of that Dubai Brown. Alright, I don't have a specific color for this highlight, um, it's a bit of a beige mixed in with that gobi brown, I can't remember which beige I had in my hand, um, or in my palette, but just kind of mix them together. Looking at highlighting um, towards the gobi and the Dubai, not into the African shadow yet, the African shadow will be the same kind of beige and African shadow mix as we're doing right here, but with gobi brown, um, in the next clip that comes across. Sarah from Sepia here to bring it all together. Okay, time to look at the inside of his cloak. Um, so we're going to just hit a couple coats of Blood Red by Scale 75 here. A few coats will be sufficient, um, just remember that red is nice and translucent, so you want to make sure many thin coats um, here. Alright, now the next color that we're going to use is Scale 75's Fuchsia. Um, trying to look at the, the higher points of his jacket here, and around the, uh, the cuffs. Now you're going to see me actually go back and, and repaint a couple of different layers here. This has sped up quite a bit um, because my paint's pretty thin and it'll dry pretty fast. So I'm just trying to make sure that the color is nice and saturated um, and getting good coverage over top of that red so we can keep highlighting it afterwards. Now what you guys don't see here is the fact that on my wet palette I have a lot of different colors sitting around. So I just kept on adding in white um, to the fuchsia to get it brighter and brighter and brighter. So as you see the paint on my paintbrush getting brighter, it's not that I'm, mixing, I'm not getting a new color. I'm actually just mixing in white, so now I'm actually almost into a hot pink here, just on the, along the, the lines of the inside, on the top of his uh, jacket's collar and around those cuffs. Okay, so two things here. Um, I think the first is that I went through and added in a white piping along the edge of uh, the coat he's wearing. Um, makes him feel a bit navy-ish in terms of uh, what I think, um, so that's why I did it. Um, and here we're just base coating everything that needs to be gold in um, Skill 75 Viking Gold. Um, it's one of my absolute favorite colors. It's um, 
almost bronzish, but not quite. So uh, here we're getting the Achilla on his chest, his rapiers, uh, guard, as well as any other gold bits that you might see along his uh, his gear or, or belt here. Now this is going to be like the similar, similar kind of goals you've seen across um, any other game line. Um, it's a nice mid-range color, like you think gold, this is what it's going to be. Uh, we'll really make it pop with the next couple of colors that are coming up though. Okay, and uh, this is where things are going to start to get uh, pretty bright, so we're going to look at places where the light will be catching, um, just highlighting not everywhere, but a lot of everywhere, um, in Elf Gold by Scale 75. You can already see, like, even on the camera, it's starting to shine a lot more. Uh, that's a really cool thing about these metallics, is that they really show luster very well. Okay, now we're looking at the second last highlight. Um, this is Peridot Alchemy. Um, it's a really weird pale color, and we're looking at like the tops of the curves here. Um, uh, just places to make it look more interesting, rather than just having entire lines of highlights. So we're like, really looking at the contours of that guard um, for the Achilla. We'll make sure that we get the feathers of the wings, and basically like, draw a line down the center of it to show a little bit of shade like we're doing there. Yeah, it's just really fun. I get a little bit of shot of my hair. Excellent, right on. And our last highlight here is Citrine Alchemy. Um, it looks really opaque uh, in the bottle, but here we're looking at like almost white reflections on the gold, so you can see he's putting on small dots of it in areas, um, maybe a couple of lines, but nothing to overpower the previous colors. Alright, and then we just have a quick wash of Agrax Earthshade Gloss, um, just to add some contrast into the darker recesses. Okay, now we're going to go in and base coat all the metals uh, in Skill 75 Black Metal. And metal highlight first here is Skill 75's Black Metal that we used last time, as well as Skill 75's Heavy Metal, I'm taking a look at the top of the blade, um, and the top of the buckles are the pauldron, not the pauldron, but the chest pieces. Alright, highlight the third is taking a look just using Heavy Metal at the top of the blade. I realize it's a little bit more on the frame, and I apologize for that, guys. Uh, but yeah, just towards the point, the top side of that sword.
and silver that I'm going to use here, and then speed metal. And we're looking at just at the top edge, um, uh, middle side of it, and then the, the end point there for this blade, as well as anywhere other that we're going to highlight for the silver. It's just like the finest lead color that we're looking for. And then for our wash, again, we're going to use the gloss version of Null Oil, just on the blade, uh, because it's frankly superior than the matte version. Alright, now this next part is going to be similar to the fuchsia that I was painting before for the inside of the cloak. We're taking a look at the spines on the weird beast thing on his back. Um, we're going to base them in Scale 75 Indian Shadow. And I also have some Scale 75 white down on my palette as well. And what we're going to do is to start mixing in a little bit of that white to that Indian Shadow as we're going across, making it brighter along the ends of it as uh, we're mixing more and more white, um, hitting the claws there as well as we're doing it. Good, and with the skin tone on, um, we're going to give it an all over wash. You can see me working on it here um, with Caribou and Crimson by Nance Workshop. Again, moving it around before it dries entirely and making sure it's not sitting in weird places. We're also going to hit the spines with that same wash. Alright, it's beat up leather time, so we're taking a look at doing his boots right now, as well as the gun holster, and then scabbard on his um, knife there, uh, we're using Dubai Brown, um, and this is actually how I did all of the trench coats on my guild death marshals. Um, obviously, if you have marked on Facebook, you guys would have seen those, but this is the general process that I go through, and it's actually the majority of stippling with using a really cool paint from Vallejo Cold Smoke, and you guys can watch that now. Basically highlighting where people are, or where places uh, would be kicked around or scuffed on the leather. Um, but you can be as messy as you want here because we're gonna we're gonna tile together afterwards. Okay, uh, the next uh, bit of weathering that we're gonna use is Sahara Yellow, and notice that here I'm gonna be much more pinpoint of where I want it to be. It's getting quite bright, and you're looking at quite a transition there. If we weren't going to use the smoke, it would look awful, but you'll see it in a bit. Okay, and then we're going to do one final highlight here of uh, white sands, uh, just small dots uh, looking at places that would be like the most extreme damage that leather could see.
Okay, and here's where we're gonna go in and take a look at smoke. Um, you're gonna treat it like a wash, um, or like a normal color, like, like this paint, but just notice how thin it is, and it's basically staining it down to what beaten leather would look like. Um, I love this look, I love this color, it's great for this effect. Okay, I lost a little bit of footage, but just for the shirt that he's wearing, um, I just grabbed a purple and then started mixing some, some beige into it, and this is the final highlight you're seeing here, and then a quick wash of Drukai Violet to wrap it up. So I left out some of the non-exciting small details, like the lens, the beast size and face, etc., uh, shoelaces and such, but I hope you guys liked that tutorial. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe what you're seeing here. Um, I'm getting all jazzed up and making content again, so please pay attention to the channel, and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks a lot, and have a good one. Bye-bye.